Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's session, I will explain how you can set up the VMware workstation in such method that one interface can be used for management purpose and another one can be used for internet access. So basically, when you add a device in EVNG software, you can easily decide which interface can be part of the management and the other interface can be part of production or internet access. Most of the companies or I would say all the companies follow the same design. They do not mix the production channel with management channel and architects keep these things in mind while working in HLD and LLD power. There are a lot more advantages for keeping the management channel out from the production and I'm not going to cover all those in this video. So let's focus on our main topic. Our motto is to keep management subnet away from the production subnet. And we will make this happen doing the changes in VMware workstation. All right, let's begin. Go to the VMware workstation. Now select the edit option. Now click on virtual network editor. Basically, when you first uninstall the VMware workstation on your system, it will usually create three interfaces, VMNet 0, VMNet 1, and VMNet 8. Now the question is, what is VMNet in VMware? VMNet or virtual networks can also be referred as a virtual switch. As an important part of the virtual networking component, a virtual switch is used to connect other networking components together, including virtual network adapters, the virtual DSCP server and the net device, just like a physical switch. You can either use a default VM net to connect your VM to the internet or configure a custom network manually. Now you can see it has allocated three interfaces as I told you VM net 0, VM net 1 and VM net 8. And it's up to you how many interfaces you want to keep for the lab purpose. Let's first understand what are those default VMNet in VMware Workstation. So basically, there are three default types of virtual networks in VMware. So VMNet 0, which has default setting based. VMNet 1, which has default setting host only. And the last one is VMNet 8, which has the default setting NAT. I need only two interfaces for my lab, so I can delete the VMNet Eight interface from here and how I can do this just select the VMNet 8 interface and click on the button here remove network or if you want to add more interfaces you can click on the button add network and select the VM interface from the list and click OK that's it Now it's time to change IP pool associated with VMNet 0 interface as well as VMNet 1. Basically, I will use the subnet 192.168.200.0/24 for VMNet 0 interface, and will use the subnet 192.168.200.0/24 for VMNet 1 interface. So to do this, just select the interface VMNet 0 and use the option host only. Now in the subnet field, you can change the IP subnet. So for VMNet 0, I'm going to use 192.168.200.0 and the mask will be 255.255.255.0. And don't forget to check mark these two options where you will see connect a host virtual adapter to this network. And one more option is there to check mark use DSCP service to distribute to this network. Now click on the button here DSCP setting and reserve the IPs from the pool or define the IP range that you want to allocate to the VMs. Basically you are telling to the DSCP server that if any IP request comes from the host on this VMNet 0 interface for DSCP server, please do assign IP to the host from the IP range 192.168.200.100 to 192 192.168. 200.254 and do not assign any IP to the host 
from the range 192, 168, 200.1 to 192.168, 200.99. All right, it's time to apply the settings for VMNet One interface. So same process you have to follow. You can use the VMNet One interface for two ways. Either you can bridge the VMNet One interface over a physical interface or Wi-Fi interface, or you can avoid bridging the VMNet One interface over a physical interface or Wi-Fi interface and use it to create another local network. The best part of this setting is you don't need to come back here and do the changes every time. You can make the change on VM host and decide whether you want to keep the secondary interface for internet services or you want to use only one interface for the management purpose. Let's configure the DSCP pool for the VMNet 1 interface. So to do this, just select the interface VMNet 1 and use the option host only. Check mark both the options where you will see the option connect a host virtual adapter to this network and the another one is dedicated for DSCP. Use DSCP service to distribute this network. Now you have an option to make the changes of your IP subnet. So for VMNet 1, I'm going to use 192.168.100.0 slash 24. Now it's time to reserve the IPs. So click on the button here, DSCP settings, reserve IPs from the pool or define IP rail that you want to allocate to the VMs. Again, you are telling to the DSCP server that if any IP request comes from the host on this VMNet 1 interface for the DSCP server, please do a send IP to the host from the IP range 192.168.100.100 to 192.168.100.254 and do not assign IP to the host from the range 192.168.100.1 to 192.168.100.99. With this settings on VMNet 1, your VM host on EVAG device will have access to the 192.168.100.0.24. I'm not talking about the internet services. The settings we have applied on VMNet 1, that is only to access the 192.168.100.0.24 subnet. Now the magic comes here. It's time to press the interface, which interface VMNet 1 interface over a physical interface or either Wi-Fi interface. So to do this, just select the interface VMNet 1 and use the option Brace. There are multiple interfaces you will see in the drop down list. Choose the appropriate interface. Either it could be a Ethernet interface or it's a Wi-Fi interface. If you are using desktop and you don't have a Wi-Fi adapter on it, choose the Ethernet. If you have a desktop or a laptop, you can choose the Wi-Fi interface. So I'm not using physical Ethernet on my laptop for internet connection. I'm using Wi-Fi. So VMNet interface should be placed on a Wi-Fi adapter. Make sure you choose the right interface of your laptop or desktop to place the VMNet one interface. Now you can save the changes. Check the mic and make sure it sounds right, boys. Okay, let's check the EVNG host settings. So here you can see I have added two network adapters for EVNG software. The adapter one is braced over a physical interface, which is Wi-Fi. And another adapter is mapped with VMNet one interface. The VM host or EVNG software itself is connected to VMNet zero. And the EVNG software will get the IP address from the IP pool 192.168.200.100 to 192.168.200.254. So basically, my EVNG will not depend on broadband subnet and will not lose IP if broadband router goes offline. Even with this settings, I can work offline on any topology and there will not be any disturbance. The EVNG internal devices will have access to both subnets. The management subnet would be 192.168.200.0/24, and the production or the internet services can be accessed using the subnet 192.168.1.0/24.
and this subnet itself will help you to access internet because the subnet is configured on my broadband router. In entire video, I did not configure 192.168.1.0 slash 24 subnet on any VM interface because we have already placed the VM net one interface on physical adapter or Wi-Fi adapter. Now let's turn on the EVNG simulator and we'll see the result. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. Now you can see the EVNG software receives an IP address from IP subnet that we configured on VMnet 0. And using the same IP address, I can access the EVNG from the web mode. The default username is admin and the password is he. Let's create a dummy or test lab to verify the solution applied. Now right click on workspace and select the option node. In my case, I am going to load a L2 switch for testing purpose. Let's change the device icon as well as the host name of the device. Now right click on workspace and this time the option is network. Also select the option cloud zero. Okay, the magic is here. Just listen carefully. The cloud zero interface is actually a VMnet zero interface. It means this channel is for management purpose. Save the settings and come out. Now again, right click on the workspace and select the option network. Also, select the option Cloud 1. Okay, the Cloud 1 interface is actually a VMnet 1 interface. It means this channel is for production purpose. And Cloud 1 will help you to access internet. Save the settings and come out. Let me quickly configure the switch with two VLANs. So here in my case, the VLAN 100 will be production subnet and VLAN 200 will be for management. I will assign 192.168.1.150/24 IP address to VLAN 100 and 192.168.200.150/24 IP address to VLAN 200. Okay, let me turn on the device. And let's access the device from the secure CRT. All right. So first we will configure the host name for this device. And then we need to create two VLANs, VLAN 100 and VLAN 200. So VLAN 100 and then VLAN 200. That's it. Now we have to assign IP address on VLAN 100 and VLAN 200. So as I told you, I will assign 192.168.1.0/24 subnet IP address on VLAN 100 and 192.168.200.0/24 subnets IP address on VLAN 200. So to assign the IP address on VLAN, the command is interface VLAN 100. IP address 192.168.1.150 one slash 24 and no shut. Now it's time to assign IP address on VLAN 200. So VLAN 200 IP address 192.168.200.150 and slash 24. So we have assigned IP address on VLAN 100 and we also assign IP address on VLAN 200. 
let's verify the interface status so interface is down and protocol is also down so basically this has cloud 0 and this has cloud 1 connection so cloud 0 is for management purpose and cloud 1 is for internet access so what i have to do is ethernet 0 slash 0 interface i will keep it in vlan 200 and ethernet 0 slash 1 interface i'll keep it in vlan 100 so let's do this one interface ethernet 0 slash 0 switchboard mode access switchboard access vlan 200 and ethernet 0 slash 1 switchboard mode access and switchboard mode access vlan 100 let's wait until the interface vlan 100 and 200 will come up show ip interface brief okay so vlan 200 came up and vlan 100 is also came up okay it's time to verify whether i'm able to access gateway ip address for both the vlans so let's ping 192.168.200.1 yes i'm able to access now let's ping 1.1 which is broadband ip address yes i'm able to ping so we need to verify whether this switch have the internet access so for that i need to configure a gateway for this switch and basically i'm going to assign default route on it and let's ping the ip address 8.8.8 .8 .8. See, I'm able to access internet. Let's ping 8.8, 4.4. This is also working. Ping 4.2.2.2. This is also working. All right, guys, that's it in this video. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. If the video content is worth watching for you, and if you think this video can help others too, Please do share the video with your colleagues, friends and anyone. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys. See you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.